No, no, it's something about Yorkton. I was there. I didn't really want to leave. I was having such a good day. Yorkton's humming. Yeah. Um, so is Alberta, too, of course, and that's where we hook up with Rachel Holman this morning. Throw your headphones on, Kirk. Okay. Uh, Rachel Holman joining us today. A, a break from her busy schedule joins us on video chat. Good morning, Rachel. How are things in uh, northern Alberta today? <laughs> good morning. They're a little chilly, but pretty good. Good, good. And Kirk, you can chime in on this, too. Where's the rowdiest, best venue in Canada, because you've been around the world, but in Canada that you like curling in the most for atmosphere? Um, I was kind of listening to Kirk a little bit, and um, I have to agree, Saskatchewan is, it doesn't really matter where you go in Saskatchewan. I know you guys are talking about Yorkton, but um, Saskatoon, I've, it's almost always sold out kind of no matter where you play in Saskatchewan. So it's always a lot of fun to go there. Can you tell us how your curling season's been here, 2019, 20, and uh, how you guys are feeling as we get into the, the money time coming up here in 2020? Yeah, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster. We um, did really well early and then um, kind of hit the pause button there in the middle and then uh, just won the Canada Cup and I uh, didn't qualify in the last one. So um, we're uh, hitting it all. We're, we're having some um, disappointing weekends and some really amazing weekends and um, just trying to find, find our groove again. We uh, had a bit of a different off season this year in the summer. Uh, different training and, and looking a little bit different going into the season. So we weren't able to, to get everything we wanted to get into um, as early as we normally like to. So um, we're hoping to figure out how, um, what kind of training we're going to go and do into provincials and, and play downs. It's, it seems like we, you guys, Rachel, over the years have always been able to um, just rise to the occasion. And, and you didn't mention it here, but, but they also got the first trial spot in, at the Canada Cup. Um, you know, everyone always asks you, how does that change your, your planning over the next few years and that sort of thing? Um, you know, and I'd like to know if it does change it at all. But um, is, is that a weight off your shoulders to know that you do have that trial spot? Or is it more just, you know, you knew you were going to be in the trials. It didn't really matter when you were going to qualify for them. Um, you just happened to get it at the Canada Cup there. But um, you guys seem to always rise to the occasion, you know, win the games you need to win. And, and you did it there. Um, uh, how does that feel you know, kind of going into the next few years, knowing that, um, you, you got that locked up. I mean, it felt great. Uh, the Canada Cup is, um, for those of you who don't know, are, is basically a trial run for our trials. Um, and the trials is, if you win that, you represent Canada at the Olympics. And so it's always great to kind of do a test run. Um, it's always the same time in, in December, end of November. Um, and, and they do it every year. They have the trials. Uh, uh, every three years they have the trials. And, and in between they do Canada Cup. Um, and so it's very similar and it's great to be able to do well there and, and get our trial spot. Um, it's definitely a little bit of a weight off your shoulders for sure. You don't really have to think about it um, going forward, but uh, you have so many goals as a curling team. You're not just looking three years down the road. You're, um, there's, there's slam goals and uh, play down goals and um, as well, the TSN events are, are always huge and, and attract great crowds and, um, it's, there's a lot of different things along the way other than the Olympics. And so, um, absolutely. That's a huge weight off our shoulders, uh, especially with kind of the up and down season we've had this year. Um, but hoping to, uh, have some more ups coming up in January, we've got play downs and, uh, I mean, it's really important for us to get back to the nationals and represent our province and, um, hopefully we can get there. Hey, Rachel, uh, that actually leads into the question I had for you because we were talking about it with hockey um, and you kind of touched on it here. How big is the Olympics for you guys and, and for curlers? And Kirk, you guys need to touch on this too. How big is that? Because we know the Scotties are, are big, the, the, the TV events, the slams, those are all pretty big. And, 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 you know, it's definitely the Scotties and the Briar that are the two biggest ones for kind of us in the country. But where does the Olympics fall into just kind of goals, dreams, and, and just how big is that? I think for any amateur athlete, um, the Olympics is kind of that, the, the pinnacle, the, the be all end all, everyone wants to get there. Everyone wants to, to bring a medal home for Canada and, and play on that Olympic stage among so many amazing peers. Um, it, it's amazing to see curling is just gaining so much speed in so many different countries. They've been putting years behind, um, their teams and, and so much funding and, and so kind of when you see our slams and there's all kinds of international teams there, um, you always see them in the playoffs. They're, they're right there. Um, 
with our Canadian teams. And so we've kind of got a battle against some some teams that are fully funded and, and that's kind of their full job. And, and then in Canada, it's um, a little bit less so, but we're still trying to compete and, and, and trying to win medals for uh, Canada's game curling. Speaking of funding, when the news came down the last 10 days, two weeks about equal pay for Briars and uh, Briar and Scotty's winners, you're the first person I thought of because we just talked about that in Paradise Hill last month. So yeah. <laughs> what did you think when that news? Did you know that it was coming or was it a surprise to you when they announced it? No, actually, I had no idea it was coming. Um, I know uh, Catherine Henderson um, has been working on it for the last couple of years since she was she says she's been our president and um, it's something that came as a shock. Absolutely. The, I know we touched on it in some meetings and um, didn't think it would go that well and didn't think it would happen this soon um, just from speaking with uh, different parties and different people involved. Um, so that kudos to Curling Canada for making that happen. And um, I mean, we've won three Scotties, so I, I wish it happened uh, on our first one. <laughs> <A little. laughs> the best is still to you, come. You can't have it all. <laughs> Best is still to come. What do you got, Kirk? Well, I was uh, I was going to say uh, you've won three Scotties, Rachel. Uh, the um, curler of the decade is coming up, and I think you got to be a, a prime candidate for that. But uh, on another note, uh, a new mom and a, a, you grew your family this this season or this summer. Um, how has that kind of played into into your um, into your team and, and for Joanne too, being a new mother, kind of played into your team into this season. Uh, has it changed the dynamic on the road at all? And uh, I can't imagine um, how tired some some games you must be, but you still find a way to compete. So um, just like you had to shed a little light on, on what it's like to be a new mom and, and still competing at, and being one of the best players in the world. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you don't feel like some one of the best players in the world because you're um, exhausted going out on the ice and um, not sure what you're doing. But it's definitely very challenging. Um, I think it, you can't really prepare yourself for, for what's to come. And every situation is different and every, every kid is different. So um, that's going to look different even within the same sport or within the same team. And so we're just trying to go with trial and error and see what works and what doesn't. And we've definitely found uh, what doesn't. And so <laughs> we've found a few things that are working and, um, trying to find that balance between being a mom and, and getting the rest that you need um, to be able to perform at your best is, is really, I think, the biggest challenge. And um, trying to find that balance of not feeling guilty of, of um, kind of doing what you love and um, also being a good mom and, and being there for him. So it's uh, definitely challenging, and but it's an amazing experience. And we both feel so lucky that we're able to do that. I know a lot of people have, have problems and and so it's, uh, yeah, it's, we feel very fortunate that we're able to still compete and bring them on the road with us. And, and that's a lot of fun. Well, I know on the outside looking in, you guys look like you do a great job, but I'm sure it doesn't feel like that on the inside all the time. So um, <laughs> it's, pre it's pretty cool to watch you guys be able to do that. I got to say, Rachel, too, just lastly, before we let you go, I was thinking about this when I was driving home from that event in Paradise Hill. I only knew you from what I saw on TSN and certain Sportsnet events, and it's that steely, fiery glare on the ice, never crack a smile. And then we're in this hall, and you're quick with a joke, cool, funny. Um, does something take you over when you step on the ice that you're just this fiery competitor? What? Because you're a completely different person away with the, from the rink. Would you agree with that? Have you ever heard that before? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, but I think anyone in sport, like there's, it's, uh, it's hard to explain, I guess, but, um, when you go out on the ice and, and you have a job to do and, um, you want to be professional and, and you want to make sure you're competing at the highest level and, and you're completely engaged in what you're doing. Um, it's, it's definitely a different person. And I mean, it doesn't really matter what it is, whether it's business or, um, sport, whether it be amateur or professional, um, you're you're gonna have that drive and, and that you have that motivation to succeed in, in whatever you're doing and so um, there's not really a, a ton of room for um, jokes and <laughs> and uh, just having fun and and relaxing and and kind of just getting to know one another but it, yeah it's definitely different uh, it's great to do those events and uh, it's great to meet people like you I mean uh, it's it's great to hear your story and it was a lot of fun um, being on stage doing the hot stove questions. It was uh, definitely a, a great experience. But, it, I mean, I think it's just very different whether you're competing. I mean, 
if you looked at anyone, it's easier for us, I guess, maybe to be picked apart just because we don't have um, a helmet on or a mask to kind of hide that that part to get that little bit of a barrier. But uh, I, I think if you if you took the helmets off football players or hockey players, you wouldn't see too many smiles. Uh, maybe after the goals, but uh, that's yeah, they would look just as intense. And and lastly, by the way, it's been a bit of a running theme since that event on this show was it as awkward for everybody else in the room the fight daryl and sutter and i were having on don cherry or was it just because they're still talking about it up there was it that awkward could you feel it i yeah i could feel it i was with you and uh i think it was you and me against uh 200 others so (laughs) okay good (laughs) i'm sorry i didn't come to your defense but uh i was wasn't sure if we're gonna get chased out with pitchforks so I it think was, uh, you were as stunned as I was that this was turning into a thing. But yeah, so anyway, thank you for that. Next time, don't be afraid <laughs> to pipe up. <laughs> I mean, I love Saskatchewan. I didn't want to get on their bad side. Gotcha. Well, they love you too. We love you too. Rachel, thanks for this. And we'll be watching into the new year. Merry Christmas to your young family out there. And uh, thanks for the time this morning. Thank you so much. Happy Christmas to you guys and uh, hope all is well. Appreciate it. You bet. Rachel Holman this morning from Alberta joining us. And uh, that was fun. All of this has been fun. Oh, yeah. yeah she's great. And yeah. I've never met her. So this was, this was kind of fun. This is the curling talk overall. Yeah, exactly. It's fun. Kirk, I appreciate Ray, you coming hey, in. Thanks for having me. Like I said, Rachel's awesome. Uh, I've known Rachel for some time now. And uh, uh, her and her team, they're just um, really role models for a lot of people in this country. That's for sure. And uh, uh, they're winners. And uh, Watching, watching, watching big games with players like Rachel and Emma and Joe and, and Lisa. Um, boy, it's fun to watch that because they are just absolute winners, and that's what sport's all about. No kidding. Kirk, Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas to you, too. And uh, before it gets hot, real hot on the road, we'll get you back in here and tee it all up. Cool? Awesome. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. You betcha. Kirk Myers from the Myers Curling Team. Uh, Dupes and I back with overtime after this break. You're watching the Rod Peterson Show on Facebook Live and listen live at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.